Friday, May 21st, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Uh, today, we're going to look at John Exter's inverted pyramid. I've looked at this many times before on this channel, and uh, it's a very interesting concept. That, and I think it shows why having physical gold and silver will really be the place to be when, when the whole system implodes. Uh, and, and why is that? Well, John Axter was a central banker. Uh, he worked for the New York Fed. He helped create uh, or found central banks in Asia, like the uh, Ceylon Central Bank or Sri Lanka Central Bank. I think he was governor of the Philippine Central Bank. The guy knew what he was talking about in terms of uh, finance, in terms of gold. He was uh, one of the original gold bugs in the 60s and early 70s. Uh, after he retired from, I think it was Chase Manhattan Bank. Uh, it could be another one of the big New York banks. But uh, yeah, he retired in the 60s. And he actually consulted central bankers still in his retirement. He, he was the guy who... Paul Volcker turned to, uh, just before Nixon closed the gold window, Paul Volcker was an assistant secretary for international affairs at the U.S. Treasury. And uh, he was instrumental, uh, John Axter, in telling Paul Volcker uh, what choices the Treasury had uh, on August 15, 1971. So he knew the system inside out. Uh, I started following John Axter Probably back in 2003, he died, unfortunately, in 2006. Uh, yeah, I think he was born in 1910. So, uh, yeah, he had a very good innings. <laughs> he was uh, 96 when he died. So it says here, John Exter was an American economist, a member of the Board of Governors of the United States Federal Reserve System and founder of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. He's also known for creating Exter's Pyramid. So let's go to the pyramid here and see what they say about the pyramid. Exter is known for creating Exter's Pyramid, for visualizing the organization of asset classes in terms of risk and size. In extra scheme, gold forms the small base of the most reliable value. And I would add silver to that as well, of course. And asset classes on pro progressively higher levels are more risky. The larger size of asset classes at higher levels is representative of higher total worldwide notional value of those assets. While Exter's original pyramid placed third world debt at the top, today derivatives hold this dubious honor. So what are derivatives? Well, derivatives are just side bets on the price of underlying assets. There are derivatives on gold, unfortunately. Um, the whole COMEX futures is, is a derivative. The whole fractional paper uh, reserve, fraction reserve uh, system of trading paper gold on the LBMA, uh, unallocated gold. That's all derivatives of gold. You don't really, you're not really holding gold or silver. You can add silver to that. You're not really holding one of these, a, a half dollar. You, uh, you have a promise from probably a banker, unfortunately, that uh, he or she has the gold and probably doesn't. And then you have uh, paper money, of course, which is the notes we use nowadays that people call money. Uh, you've got government bonds, treasury bills, but you can see the list. But the derivatives, of course, derivatives have infiltrated the whole pyramid, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not sure that's something that extra... Uh, John Exter realized was going to happen in the in the 70s when he devised this. I'm sure he, he saw it uh, evolving uh, later on in the 90s and the uh, early 2000s when he was still alive. So uh, I think this uh, pyramid is even more dangerous right now because 
the derivatives are not just on the top of the pyramid. They've infiltrated, as I said, all the other assets. So the gold at the bottom is not Comex gold. It's not LBMA unallocated. It's not Perth Mint unallocated or any other unallocated uh, instrument. Uh, it, it, it's real gold, real physical gold. And uh, John Exter always thought that <laughs> this uh, system, which he called really a non-monetary system after August 15th, 1971, we don't really have money. Uh, we deal in uh, empty promises. That's what he said. Uh, he called uh, U.S. Treasuries, I owe you nothings because you cannot redeem it. You cannot extinguish the debt <laughs> with real money, physical silver and gold. And, and that's why it's so important to keep stacking. I noticed yesterday that Wall Street Silver uh, Reddit group went over 80,000. It's almost at 81,000. I really recommend you go there. There's loads of hundreds of pictures of new uh, converts to sound money showing uh, their new stacks. Uh, there's some beautiful silver there, uh, silver bars, silver silver rounds. There's a few jokes as well, of course. It's very fun uh, page, I would say. Uh, Wall Street Silver YouTube channel as well. I recommend uh, people uh, subscribe to that channel. There's great interviews with loads of people in the uh, Sound Money camp. I'm gonna be uh, interviewed by them, of course, on the 25th of May next week. So, um, yeah, what is the end game of, the, uh, uh, of John Exter's pyramid? Well, I, I think it's uh, the uh, collapse of the, this non-monetary system that you know, we have, the co collapse of the fiat dollar. And uh, as I've said many times before, all fiat currencies are going to be, <laughs> uh, how can I say, affected. They're going to be destroyed by this because uh, the system was developed originally at Bretton Woods. All the fiat currencies nowadays are based, they are a derivative of the dollar. So when the system implodes, when people rush out, and that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a, a deflationary collapse before, of course, we have the hyperinflation that we're getting right now. But when the deflation happens, uh, gold and silver are going to be, uh, as people, some people call it unobtain unobtainable <laughs> or you won't be able to get it. We're already having a tough time getting it in many places, even though it's still we're still able to get it. So we're very lucky that we can still get it. But can you imagine um, all the uh, liabilities, all the claims, all the derivatives, all this notional amount that runs into the, I would say, thousands of trillions, which is a quadrillion at least, trying to uh, get into gold and silver. It will be impossible. It, it will be like trying to get Niagara Falls into a hose pipe. <laughs> and and uh, I think we're lucky uh, to be able to see this. Of course, I can't tell you when it's going to happen, but uh, it could happen any time. And yes, granted, uh, they've been able to keep the system going for almost 50 years now. It's going to be 50 years on August 15th. I think this system is getting long in the tooth. What will trigger the collapse, the end of the system? I don't know. It's something probably that we haven't even thought about, but it will uh, basically annihilate faith and confidence in the central banks, especially uh, the Federal Reserve. So let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's 8.24 a.m. London time. We've got the paper derivative gold or spot gold, whatever you want to call it, trading at uh, 18.74. It's down just over $2. Uh, the high has been 1879 and the low 1870. So it's been a pretty uh, narrow range overnight. We've got uh, spot silver down 10 cents. At 27.65, range has been 27.58 to 27.84. Uh, the Dow future is up 90. 
Uh, the NASDAQ 100 futures up 48 points. S&P futures up 11. So what happens to the stock market when we have liquidity flowing down John Exter's pyramid in a collapse? Well, people who have a claim, claim of ownership to companies that produce real things, they'll be okay, but there'll be a period there where you won't be able to liquidate or buy a company, I think. I don't know what will happen exactly. I wasn't around during Weimar Germany. Uh, I mean, we can read about what happened there, but I think nowadays it's completely different because the whole world uh, is in this system. It, it's a massive Ponzi scheme. So I couldn't tell you, but one thing's for sure, you're gonna need uh, gold and silver. What about cryptocurrencies? I, I, I don't think uh, it's a place I wanna be, especially when uh, John Exter's pyramid uh, f finally comes to fruition in terms of the, all the liquidity being sucked out of the system. Uh, so I'd rather be in, in the real money, gold and silver. So what about the currencies this morning? Uh, we've got uh, sterling uh, unchanged, 141.84. The euro is unchanged as well, 122.28. Uh, dollar is down slightly versus the yen at 108.75. And the dollar is unchanged versus the yuan at 643.50. So very quiet this morning, <laughs> the movements in the markets. Uh, just have a look at the Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar is down a third of a percent at 77.44. Uh, so with that, let's quickly move to the commodities. We've got uh, WTI crude up a third of a percent at 62.09. So for now, it looks like commodities are actually taking a breather. The general commodities, of course, doesn't mean that gold and silver can't go up because in the last nine months or so, we've seen uh, the general commodities uh, go up quite a bit while gold and silver have consolidated. So I actually think we we could see further consolidation in commodities before they pick up again, of course. Uh, we've got uh, high-grade copper down a, a percent at 452. And uh, to finish off, uh, the 10-year yield, uh, pretty steady here, hanging <laughs> around the 160s, that's what it's doing right now. It, it, it's trading between like 162, 166. Uh, maybe there is some kind of yield curve control right now, but uh, there you go. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great weekend. Take care, bye.